on to Milton about my article on Monica Ridley. Well, why on earth didn't she get on to you? Well, I gather Milton is personally acquainted with the lady. They're both on the same committee of some charity. Oh, Lord. Yes. Well, what's she saying about the article? Well, what you might expect. That it's a pack of lies, that it libels her mother. But you can't libel the dead. I'm just quoting. Anyway, the long and short of it is, she's threatening to take the matter to the press council. The press council? You must be joking. She hasn't got any sort of case. Oh, that's what I would have said. But Milton's most upset that her ladyship's nose is out of joint. And he's coming round here this morning. I see. Oh, well. Bang go my chances of getting the editorship. You definitely decided to apply, had you? Yes. Peter and I have talked about nothing else all week. I haven't written the letter or anything yet. I was planning to do that this evening. Mm, well, you still can. You haven't done anything wrong, Liz. Except get on the wrong side of one of Milton Monk's friends. Oh, occupational hazard, that, in journalism. Milton knows that as well as anyone. Mm. Well, I wish I could be here to, uh, to back you up, Liz. I feel bad leaving you to cope with Milton Monk on your own. Oh, can't be helped. It's press day and you can't keep the printers waiting. Mm. Anyway, let's hope he's calmed down a bit by the time he sees you. Yes. His bark's always worse than his bite. Just remember that. I'll try. And it was a smashing article. Remember that, too. Milton will see that when he simmers down. Oh, my, please. You make it sound as if I won't have the job I've got by the end of the day. Never mind about applying for promotion. One dozen chicken gear fat, one three five each. Sixteen twenty plus fat at fifty percent. It's two pounds forty three. Oh, hello, love. Hello. Just off to work. I thought I'd pop in and say goodbye. Goodbye. Ashton Prize. Hang on a tick, then. Yes. You, you haven't had your order, Mister Fisher. He usually comes on Wednesday. Yes, I see. No, no, no I'm, I'm very sorry about that. We've uh, had a few difficulties recently, as a matter of fact. Yes, one of our staff broke a leg last Saturday, so we've been a bit short-handed. But uh, don't you worry. I'll make sure that order gets to you today without fail. No, no, no not at all. Don't mention it. Bye. And you think you can provide 500 lunches a day for McDonald Harker on top of your regular business? We can. Of course we can. Sometimes I think you're absolutely mad. We'll manage. Matt, please stop and I think. I have thought it's a bloody marvellous break I'm being offered. A real chance to make it back at least some of the way to where I was before it all went wrong. Or a chance to get into a real muddle. We're all at full stretch. I thought you just came in to say goodbye. <sighs> Matt, we've got to talk about it. You just swept our objections aside the other evening, Bill's and mine. I mean, how are you going to cook 500 lunches in that one kitchen without the rest of your business suffering? I told you, we'll employ another chef. There isn't room, Matt. They'd have to work shifts. So, they work shifts. And another thing, the menus. I don't want anything that's on our menu at the restaurant turning up in their canteen for lunch. Well, of course it won't, love. You're at the top end of the market. This is going to be canteen stuff, Cornish pasties, chicken pie, pizzas. Cooked by my chef. Uh, our chef. My chef, Matt. If you remember, he worked at the restaurant before the freezer plant ever opened. Yeah, when we were both running the restaurant. He still belongs to the restaurant, Matt. And he can't do a decent job for me if he's running around cooking 500 pizzas for you every day. I told you we'll employ someone else. Well, what I've come to say to you, Matt, is that I don't want him cooking for you at all. You are? I want him to move back to the restaurant and devote his energies entirely to that. You can recognize a good cook, whatever he's cooking. And if he's providing half of North London with subsidized lunches, then no one's going to come and pay five or six pounds a head for a meal cooked by the same man in the evening. <laughs> I don't believe it. But it was, Lynn. I've never heard such rubbish. And I don't want Rob's pudding spilt for this scheme either. Are you serious? Absolutely. If you want to expand like this and overcommit yourself, that's okay. But we've got to separate the two ventures totally. I don't want the restaurant dragged down. You don't? No. I haven't ever liked seeing our dishes sold locally. I've always thought it lost as custom. It's high time we were separate. You reckon? Yes. Oh, well. It cuts both ways, love. From now on, you better get your own ingredients. Hmm. Fair enough. Right. Well, I trust we can cooperate long enough for me to find myself a new chef. Yes? Good. 
And you'd better be going. Take you a while to sort yourself out some supplies from the Yellow Pages. Come in. Uh, you wanted to see me? Yes, Liz. Shut the door. Sit down. Well, the Thelma Goff interview. Yes. What have you got to say for yourself? I thought it was rather a good article. Something of a coup. It's upset Lady Sylvia a great deal. Well, I'm sorry about that. But Lady Thackeray's version of Life with Mother has had plenty of publicity, and I thought it was interesting to hear the other side of it. Well, story. that's all very fine, uh, uh, Liz. Uh, if they were true, the things you printed. Apparently, they're not. According to Lady Sylvia, her mother and father had a wonderful marriage. There was no suspicion of infidelity on either side, and Monica Ridley was devoted to both her daughters. It's just apparently Thelma couldn't respond. Well, that's not the way Thelma sees it. I only reported what she told me. Did you type the interview? Yes. And you've still got the type? Yes. Well, that's something. Because Thelma Goff is denying everything you wrote. Have you been in touch with her? No. Sylvia told me. You see, Liz, it's not the first time her sister's had one of these jealous outbursts, and as she's got older, she's become obsessed by it all. She's gone a bit soft in the head. Well, she didn't seem in the least bit soft Did to she me. tell you she'd been under treatment for depression? That wouldn't make her story untrue. Ah, but she didn't tell you. No. Well, what are we going to do about it? She's very distressed, Lady Sylvia. You know, she's threatening to take the whole thing to the press council. But she hasn't got a case, Mr. Monk. <laughs> You're quite sure of yourself, aren't you? Well, I've no reason not to be. Look, I'm sorry if this has been personally embarrassing for you, but why don't you leave it to me to sort it out? I'll get in touch with Lady Thackeray and tell her if she likes to write us a letter putting her point of view, we'll publish it. How about that? She'll let you come round, then. What? When? She'll let you come round. Yeah, I'll come with some veg. How is she? How do you mean? Ah, oh, come on, Rob. She was in a filthy mood when she left this morning. I wouldn't like to have been working with her over lunch. She's all right. You know, this place is going to be out of bounds for you soon. She said you decided to separate the two businesses. We decided? Ah, she decided. I just got told. Oh, I see. Honestly, you think she'd be pleased to see the freezer business really taken off, but no. God, women. Well, it hasn't been easy for any of us since Alexis broke his leg. Yeah, I know. And she does get the brunt of it. And we do need more staff. How are you planning to manage a daily order for 500 lunches? Well, once it's underway, we'll have to think about expanding. Move into bigger premises. And until it's underway? We'll manage somehow. Uh, what are you grinning at? The eternal optimist. You know, an optimist is a man who hasn't had much experience. Watch it. I uh, You didn't know what you were letting yourself in for when you took that job with Lynn, did you? I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Why not? I always wanted to be part of a proper family. Now I feel I am. Oh. Well, you're the nearest thing to a son I've ever had. Hmm. So... How do you feel about helping out again this afternoon? If you can bear it, that is. Sure thing. I'll come back in about half an hour. Right. Oh, and, uh, give him my love, will you? Hi, Liz. How's it going? Oh, all right. How are you? Oh, fine. Uh, Chris has asked me to give you this. It's a second attempt at the trade union book. Mm. Oh, thanks. So... What did the big white chief have to say this morning, then? What, Milton? <laughs> or who else? Oh, he was just carrying on about Lady Thackeray and her reaction to my article. Oh, aye. She's creating, is she? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Then he came down on you about it? Yes. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you this. If I was editor, I wouldn't stand for that. Putting pressure on one of my staff. I'd soon let him know what I thought. Maybe you'll soon have a chance to stand up for us. <laughs> well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Good. Here you are, Mike. One scotch and soda. Oh, thanks, Arthur. Aren't you having anything? Oh, yes, I'm having a sherry. Oh, oh. oh that's nice. 
Had a heavy day? Mm. The estate agent came. Oh, what did he say? He said that if it were vacant possession, it would fetch 150000 Good heavens. But with the downstairs strata control controlled tenancy, it's not vacant possession, is it? He suggested knocking off 15000 There was some way he worked it out. Seven years' rent, I think, he knocked off. I see. So he's putting it on the market at 135 <laughs> Well, we should be able to get something pretty nice in Bath for that, shouldn't we? Mm, we should indeed. He'll advertise it fully next week. And it goes in his window this weekend. I see. Well, I wonder who's going to turn up with 135 grand to spare. So do I. Anyway, we're going to have to be very tidy for the next few weeks. Point taken. Oh, what sort of a day did you have? Oh, fine. Apart from the fact that I had to leave Liz to cope with an irate Milton Monk. Why was he irate? Well, because of the Monica Ridley piece. But that was an excellent article. I know, but Milton didn't think so because it upset his great friend, the charming Lady Thackeray. Well, he can't be much of a newspaper proprietor if he's going to let personal considerations like that cloud his judgment. Well, as I have mentioned before, rumour has it Milton Monk can't actually read. <laughs> Apart from the balance sheet, of course. Is Liz upset? Well, bound to be. She wasn't even as much of a chance for the editor as it was. But this just clinches it as far as I can see. It'll be a walkover for mice. 